Welcome back guys, Tyler with Ligari Products. We have a very special project for you. Um, we are honored to present this flag to the family of a fallen hero. Um, we took a lot of time. We wanted to do a really unique flag for them. Um, as you can see, we got the thin blue line, got a scripture on there, it has the end to watch his name. Um, everyone in the company signed the back, um, wrote something, signed the back. So again, it's just a privilege for us to be able to do this for Fallen Heroes. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. You'll see from start to finish how we did it. Um, very, very cool. Enjoy. All right, guys, we're ready for the stencil part. Um, this is probably the funnest part because we get to see the design actually come together. Um, I'll just recap how we got to this point. We use uh, aluminum panel, die bond um, board, basically, um, two thin sheets of aluminum, and then in between that is sandwiched um, is, is foam, sandwiched in between two sheets of aluminum. So they're really lightweight. Um, you can do these on the hollow core doors, obviously. Um, just make sure you're cutting them out um, 36 inches wide by 80 inches long. And that's what our stencils are designed um, to do. Obviously, you can make them bigger. The stencil is just not going to cover that whole section. And the reason we like to do them the same size is because we just kind of line up each edge, tape it off, and then we put the stencil on. So yeah, so we're going to do the stencil now. Trey's going to hop in here, help me. Very simple to do. This is basically the stencil. 
And I kind of like to, I'll, I'll do it backwards just so that it's upright for you guys. So we have the stars up here, obviously. Um, if you guys, before you do it, say you have a spot on your um, board that you really want to show more of, you can kind of de uh, decide where to put that flag. So obviously, you know, the stars are going to take up quite a bit of area here. And then obviously the rest is kind of the same, but we did a design that's uniform all throughout. So it doesn't really matter where we put it. So next thing we just want to, if you have any creases, make sure the edges where the crease is push down. And again, we're not, I'm not worried about bubbles, right? Cause we're pulling this off anyways. If you guys are doing like hollow core door, obviously our edges are really thin. Um, you could just tape off your edges. That way you don't get any spray paint on your edges. You could even border out your edges um, with the thin blue line color. A lot of options with these flags. You can do the stars, different colors. The stripes, different colors, there's just so many options. So I'll just tape off my edges here. Um, that way I don't get any on, even though they're really skinny. I don't want to get any spray paint on them. Like I said before, a lot of options. We can just kind of ghost it, spray it light. We can spray it heavy so they're solid. I want to spray it like medium to where you can kind of see through it a little bit, um, but it's not completely covered. So that's, that's what I'm going for here. So you guys will want to let the spray paint dry. Um, even though it's dry, it's still going to be tacky. I'm going to pull this off just to get this done. We'll let this sit overnight. Obviously, you don't have to wait that long. Um, and then we'll tape off the blue flag, uh, the, the thin blue line, because we have to have that right under the stars. So once we pull the stencil, we're going to carry that line across, mask off the surrounding area, and then we'll, we'll spray that blue line um, once it's all taped off. All right, so there's, there's the look of it. Um, and like I was saying earlier, right, we can still see through the design because we didn't completely spray black over it. Um, and then you can tell it's a lot lighter. The, the epoxy design is a lot lighter. So we'll let this set up and then we're gonna wind up doing that thin blue line right here. So we're gonna have to carry, tape off the line straight, right? Match these up, mask off everything else. And then we'll spray that blue line on it.
So we're getting ready to spray the flag, guys. Obviously, you just saw how we did it. I wanted to tape everything off so we don't get any overspray on it. Um, typically, if you're doing something like this, um, you can have a sign shop make the full decal put together nice and straight. Um, Waldo did this for us off his uh, Cricut, so he can only do 24 inch um, length. So that's why we kind of had to cut it up, piece it up. Definitely a lot harder doing it like this. Um, so if you go to sign shop, give them the dimensions, they can make the whole thing all in one and you just line it up, put it down, real simple. Basically what's gonna happen is we're gonna spray paint over the letters, let it dry, and then we're gonna peel out each letter individually. And then that's gonna show the actual epoxy surface underneath. So it's gonna match all the other lines and it's just gonna look a lot more custom. And we don't wanna just spray heavy. I wanna do multiple thin coats. That way we get a nice even coverage um, and, we, and it lays out relatively smooth. Let that dry, we'll put a fan on it, maybe like three to five minutes and I'll just keep doing multiple coats until we get a completely solid blue color. Okay, so we're at the point where we're gonna pull everything off and then we're gonna apply our matte urethane. Before we do that, I'm gonna cut the holes for them. Uh, we'll show you how to do that. Um, these are really light, so they don't have to go into studs. Um, just get some heavy duty sheetrock anchors um, and you can mount these on the wall. That's what's nice about using those aluminum panels. These, these are called standoff screws. So what happens is we drill the hole, this will go on the bottom, you'll bolt that to your wall, and then these will screw in and hold it up. So they look really clean. It uh, sticks it out the wall a little bit. That's why they call them standoff. They come in multiple colors. You can get them on Amazon, get them all over the place. Um, so what we did is we went two inches in everywhere. You can go in farther for, if you want. You can also add one in the middle if it's needed. And again, you can get the different colors. So we opted to go with black. And then this is just a hole uh, bit for metal. And we want to make the hole a little bit bigger than the actual screw, okay? So there's some play, like maybe you need to adjust it a little bit to get it level to make it look perfect. Maybe you screwed one of these in a little crooked, just whatever. So you have, uh, these are half inch. Uh, actually, I think these are one inch. So you have that much play, theoretically. So yeah, these are one inch wide. So we can go half inch. Well, I'll probably do just one, one line under half inch and that'll give us a little bit of play. And we'll do that on all of them, like I said, in case you need to adjust it when it's on the wall a little bit to get it perfectly level. Yeah, we're right at a half inch hole and it, the hole kind of tapers in. But if I put that in there, I have some play. Again, you can go a little bigger if needed, um, but that's how you drill the hole. It's very, very simple. So this comes with screws. Obviously you want to do a, a sheetrock heavy duty sheetrock anchor, and then this will screw into your wall. 
that'll be on your wall. And then you would put the washer behind it. And then if you're obviously hanging it, we usually just backside, we'll tape it so it'll hold the washer on the backside. And then you got your washer on the front. And this is the look that you're gonna get. So really clean look. And like I said, if you need to adjust it, we have all this play in here to kind of move it, tilt it, twist it, whatever you gotta do to get it level.